physical finish. What a goal. Just when you think you know all the answers, goal number 29. That's not a spell, man. Okay, that's football where you're trying to make plays. And it's hoisted towards the back post. Montero! That's incredible. First time strike, it's the opening goal inside of a minute. Tinnerholm for Castellanos. I'm the MVP of the MVPs. Back to the top of the box. Dos Santos playing it off the back door. Atlanta United, San Jose, Joseph Martinez, the healthy version. That's Joseph Martinez, the we hope will be healthy soon version, Bobby. And it was a wild game, Andrew. Atlanta goes up, San Jose fights back. They have a player sent off. Atlanta ends up getting two goals, but as we already mentioned, the story of this game, the story of the moment in Atlanta Major League Soccer is Joseph Martinez. Vancouver, Columbus, they will not make the playoffs now, will they, Charlie? And they won't get three points in this game either. This was all Columbus. They pushed and pushed. They got a goal through Zardes and a PK. Then Montero comes in. The equalizer 90th minute, that sums up the cruise season. Yeah, late goals, the bane of their existence. Just goals, the bane of Cincinnati's existence. And yet there were none in this game. <laughs> Chicago had a chance. They were still alive in the playoffs. But as Montreal learned last week, if you want to make the playoffs, you got to beat Cincinnati right now. And Chicago failed. Hey, Bruce, for the neutrals, we want goals. You called this a must win. You can't win it without goals. And nobody got any. No, they pressed. They pushed. They pressed. Carlos, Carlos Hill, Gustavo Bo, right Point. by. And that was the Revs in a nutshell on a night goose egg at home. Nope, still look like they get that seven spot. Orlando had to get a win. Well, Weeby, Chicago drops points, so Chicago, the door is open. They even take the 1-0 lead at Houston. Then the Dynamo come back and get the 2-1 victory. Superman always fights, says the Cauldron. And Kansas City did that for, well, not long enough. KC, first 20 minutes, brilliant. Red card for Beasler, second yellow, and then it was all the Rapids. Massive win. Robin Frazier, 4-1. Tommy Smith, mate. Yeah, LA Galaxy. Uh, need a win at home. Got to beat Montreal at home. Zlatan scores. He's up to 27. And here we go. Zlatan gets the goal. He gets the assist. Montreal had a chance. They played very well in this game. It just wasn't enough out in LA. 27 goals for Zlatan. Bradley Bowl! But it Toronto was dominating it. Great tactical game plan from Toronto. They were compact. They made it difficult. Unlucky not to come over with three points, So Carlos Vela has uh, another. I mean, Chris another. Mavinga did, like, kick down Latif Blessing. Portland at home. Well, you know they're not going to score at this point. Portland at home, man. What does that even mean these days? Another poor, poor result. Mm, not happening for them. Dallas is jacked up Saturday. Two more into the National Soccer Hall of Fame. Sunday, Tati Castellanos, one touch. And he gets the early goal. You think, all right, New York City FC is going to roll. But Andrasek has something else to say. 1-1. And they needed this desperate point yeah, at home. Yeah, desperate is right. Red Bulls, Armas. Jim, Jim Curtin says lay off him. And he maybe wish he didn't say that. Cause. And Andre Blake gives a bad one away. He saves his team so many points. He costs them points today. Philadelphia almost got a chance to equalize. But in the end, the Red Bulls get the win at home. Yes, they do. Red side of New York. Not in the home game slot yet, but maybe, just maybe, they could push their way there. Ovi is in the nation's capital when Ovi's there. DC wins, right? You got to love Ovechkin at the game. And this was DC coming out. This is the, the United everyone wanted to see. They were active. They were aggressive. Home field advantage. And got the light show going. Pretty cool, huh? Here are your playoff matchups out west. If the playoffs started today, Bobby, what do you like? I actually really like that Minnesota versus Real Salt Lake. We just saw it last week. It was a fun game. Two teams who are on the rise this year. I've got my eye on that one. All right. That's the Western Conference. LAFC, of course, still in that one spot. Uh, Eastern Conference, a little bit different. I want to see who can work their way out of LAFC's side of the bracket because that is going to be important in the West no matter if they've only not won in five games have LAFC. Eastern Conference, we'll get to that one in just a little bit. What did you, uh, what'd you make of, of the West this weekend, guys? What stood out? The home team's taking care of business. I was, I was shocked by some of the results today and, and yesterday, but this is the time of year where teams got to shine, players got to step up. There's a lot of question marks with injuries, and I think that's been the big picture here is teams aren't healthy and teams aren't playing their best right now and still trying to figure out things like a Portland where they, they're at home and they're not getting results. Everyone was banking on them coming away with three points, and it hasn't happened. Has not happened. How about the Eastern Conference as the playoffs started today? Let's take a look at that. 
Bobby, what stands out to you? NYCFC 1 and then on down the list. I'm just going to keep my eye on the old school MLS rivalry, DC United, Red Bulls. Whenever they play, it's good. In a playoff game, it's even better, especially since both of these teams appear to be trending upward right now. Could we get blue side, red side in the conference semis? Bobby, could you couldn't have said it better. He, he couldn't have said it better. Hey, thanks, dude. You couldn't have said it better. It would be very, very interesting. All right, let's talk LAFC because it is yet another weekend where we don't have a win to talk about. Yes, Carlos Vela got his goal, his league-leading 29th of the season. But you guys said it, Toronto FC, the game plan worked, and it looked like they were going to pick up three all the way across the country. It was literally, let's be compact, let's stuff the middle. Let's not give Atuesta the ball and give him time and space. When they shut him down, all of a sudden, they weren't generating chances, and they're missing a target striker. You don't have someone there to hold up the ball for link-up play, and now all of a sudden you're asking Carlos Villa to do a little bit more. There you see it, Chris Mavinga with the foul on Latif Blessing. The goal from Carlos Vela. Here's what Bob Bradley had to say. I've answered that question 20 times lately, so I I understand it's a a question. No, I don't think we've been as sharp lately. Um, What are the reasons? Uh, Yeah, losing Carlos for a few weeks, so even when he comes back, getting him back to his top form. Okay, it was great to get him 90 minutes tonight. Uh, That's very important. Uh, International break, guys go away. When they come back, between travel games, different styles, our midfield's such an important part of our team. And if you talk about Mark, and you talk about Edward, and you talk about Latif, you would say that each one of those guys has had very good seasons. But lately, I don't think the, the understanding and the connection of the midfield as a whole has been as fluid and as sharp, right? both in attack and defense. So, uh, no, I don't think any of that is because now, you know, they'll come in later. Maybe someone would admit to that. Uh, I don't think so. Not as fluid, says Bob Bradley. What do you make of this? Four draws, one loss, no wins in five yeah, games. The results haven't been great, but I actually think the performances have still been very, very good. You look at the last 70 minutes against the Galaxy, they were fantastic. They had almost all of the ball against Minnesota, Orlando, and this week after the first 30 minutes against Toronto, and teams are finally starting to change how they play for when they come to play LAFC. They're a little bit tighter, like you said. They're taking away the key zones. Outside of that part of the game, the majority of what's happening on the field, the majority of the actions, LAFC are still the far superior team. It's just becoming a little bit more difficult to get into the spots they want to get into to execute for goal. But the loss of Diamande, and you, you traded away Christian Ramirez, you don't have a target point man who can hold up the ball, who can occupy defenders. Diamande can also stretch teams, so you lose that fear factor. Now teams can really just focus on uh, trying to create a bubble around Carlos Vela. And when you, it's been, been trial and error for a lot of teams is trying to figure out how do we stop them. Yep, we shall see Carlos Vela playing in the middle today, uh, excuse me, on Saturday for LAFC. Where is Adama Diamande? Well, on Friday, he voluntarily entered the MLS Substance Abuse and Behavioral Health Program. Ineligible for that game against Toronto FC at Bank of California. He has eight goals and seven assists in 2019 and will be barred from team activities for an unknown period of time, which could stretch through next month's playoffs. Per the LA Times' Kevin Baxter, a league official who was not authorized to speak publicly on the issue, Diamande is reportedly okay, has no health problems of his own. He entered the program, the official said, to deal with personal issues and will not be able to resume those activities until he's cleared by program officials. Diamande gone. You mentioned it, how it might change. Is it Carlos Vela in the middle? Is it Rossi in the middle? Rodriguez? And who makes that difference? It's been Carlos Vela whenever there hasn't been a traditional center striker. And I feel like we just actually need to put that into context. That you have Carlos Vela, who has had statistically, and maybe in every other way too, the best season in Major League Soccer history. From the right side of the field, now you're getting into the home stretch, trying to break the points record, moving toward MLS Cup, trying to prove you're the best team ever. And you're going to take that player from the right side of the field and put him in the middle. So it's not just about missing Diamande. It's everything that needs to change around that player and Andrew, it seems, it seems like it's going to be Carlos Vela, but through these four games, there's something to miss. Well, you're talking about freedom for a player. On the wing, you can isolate Carlos Vela more often, or you can pull people out from out of position, and then it creates more space for a Diomande or a Rossi. Now you're putting them in the middle, where now teams can just circle around them, put three or four guys, and then you're, you're cutting off the, the snake's head. Audi, MLS Cup playoffs are coming. LAFC. 
the presumptive favorites. We shall see if it stays that way. Matt Doyle has joined us here in the AT&T MLS studios, and he's going to break down just a little bit how LAFC might adjust come playoff time. Well, it's more about how teams are adjusting to LAFC right now because inherent to the way LAFC play is risk, and the risk primarily comes from throwing both their full backs forward, and teams have finally gotten a little bit savvy about how to attack the space that those fullbacks leave behind. And this is what we see here on the goal from Subasa Endo in, in this game on Saturday night. There's nothing too special about this. It's just keeping good spacing in the final third. But we got actually a better view of it later on in the game in buildup. Now, this is what I call playing across the zone of density for Toronto FC. You can see they were holding the ball on the right side, Endo all alone on the left side, making Stephen Betashore chase him. Betashore has to push up for LAFC to be that dominant in the midfield. They need those wide options. Mark Anthony Kay, Latif Blessing, Edward Atoesta. They need Betashore on one side, Jordan Harvey on the other side. They haven't been there as often lately. Look, a big part of it is just teams being smarter about getting through the lines and saying, okay, you're going to take a risk by playing those guys forward. We're going to punish you for that risk. It's exactly what we saw in the first 20 minutes of that El Trafico a month ago, except it was Christian Puvan and not Subasa Endo on that side of the field making LAFC pay. I think it's what LAFC is going to see for the rest of the season. Whether they get Adama Diamande back, whether Carlos Vela is playing on the right or the center, whether Mark Anthony K. Latif Blessing and Eduard Atuesta are sharp, those channels are going to get hit by opposing wingers. Subasa Endo, Christian Pavan, everyone else down the list. Well, all right, let's figure out the solution then. What do they do? Do they keep Jordan Harvey and Stephen Beta shore? Do they have to hold them back? I mean, what is the solution? It's a, it's a good question. So what they did in this one is at about the 30-minute mark, Betashore stopped going forward. He became kind of a third center back. And in this, he only played the first 45 minutes. He only had one touch in the attacking third, which is basically unheard of for an LAFC fullback. And then the second half, they brought in Tristan Blackman, who has more recovery speed. So they said, okay, you could go a little bit further forward, and Blackman's not as good, frankly, in the final third as Betashore is. But just having that other guy out there spread Toronto out a little bit. It made them come out and meet the fullback, and that gave LAFC a little more purchase in the half spaces. It was a fun little chess match. I mean, this was a great game to watch. If you have ESPN+, Plus, go rewatch this one because it was awesome. And I think Bob Bradley is going to be studying the tape pretty close because he's going to see a lot more of this.